Aloha, introducing first the challenger. On my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red trim, and hailing from Kinshasa, Zahir. Tiene un peso de 147 libras. His weight, the welterweight limit, 147 pounds. Con un record de 17 victorias, dos derrotas y un empate. Tiene siete ganadas por knockout. His record stands at 17 wins, two losses, and one draw. With seven wins coming by way of knockout, he is ranked the number two contender by the IBF. Here is the IBF Intercontinental Welterweight Champion. Aquí está el retador, clasificado número dos peso welter. Introducing the challenger, Mahengi Sulu. El campeón de la esquina roja con calzoncillo blanco. Introducing his opponent, needing no introduction to you, his fans, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with the colors of the Puerto Rican flag, y representando Cupe Alto Puerto Rico. Pesando. 147 libras, his weight, the same as his opponent, 147 pounds. Tiene un sobresaliente record de 32 victorias, sin derrota, con 28 de ellos por knockout. His record includes an unblemished 32 wins, no losses, 28 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome one of boxing's pound for pound greats, the IBF welterweight champion of the world. Aquí tenemos el campeón del mundo peso welter. Demos la bienvenida al sensacional e invicto Felix Tito Trinidad. Once again, our referee in charge now to give instructions. El referee is Luis Pavón Rivas. Hey, viene. Dámelo, dámelo, dámelo. Ok. Ok, ustedes son dos profesionales. No quiero golpe de la cintura para abajo. Cuando yo intervenga, no quiero que nadie tire. Vamos a la pelea de que hagan el mejor. You are a professional. Don't want a low punch. When I say break, stay back and don't punch. When I interfere, no vale punches. Le llaman a clean match, ok? Good luck. We preface every Trinidad fight by saying, yes, he's a great one, but he's been knocked down four times, coincidentally all four times in the second round, although he's come back to knock out all of those opponents. And uh, Mahenge Zulu, being an African-born fighter working in Italy, has, it has been a problem. He's had trouble getting fights. Here we go, round one, scheduled for 12. Trinidad says this will end in a knockout. And it won't go past five rounds. We'll see. Zulu's strategy is to move and box. You can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trinidad. Conditioning and endurance are major Mahenge Zulu qualities, but that could be academic for the man named Tito. He recognized the fact that Tito's a great puncher, and he said, he can withstand early rounds, two and three, and the barrage and all of the hoopla in the fight crowd. He said there will be a new champion. Well, to get by three rounds with Trinidad when he's on is a feat in itself sometimes. And then comes four, five, and six when Trinidad's really trying. <laughs> that is the bad time. Now, these first rounds aren't bad because he doesn't look, look at him. He's just kind of measuring the guy, boxing. He's not out there for a quick knockout. It's round one and two is when he gets caught usually with a punch because he just wiles him away. Then he starts off at three, four, and five. They're almost even in height as you can see. How they about each, reach? They each came in at 147. As far as the reach, Trinidad is 70 and Zulu is 68. So a two inch reach advantage, Trinidad. And the reason for that is a rule I'm going to give to the boxing public in a minute. 
Bobby Chez's golden rule, which I didn't know in 40 years of fighting. A fighter has the same reach as his height. Very close, Bernie. Very, very close. It's very close. Your height and your reach are almost exactly the same most times. Provided say. you're born proportionately. <laughs> Zulu says he's never been down, cut, or staggered. Some feel he may experience one, two, or all three of those things tonight. Well, he certainly picked the right opponent to take a try. But Trinidad looks like he's going to enjoy the evening before he starts to fight because he's doing nothing. Zulu does take a good punch, according to Trinidad. If this was anybody but Trinidad, this crowd would be whistling and cheering right now for it to get started. They're so respectful of him. Trinidad always seems to start very slow, notoriously slow starter. Gives a lot of respect when he fought Kevin Lucy in first round. He maybe threw a dozen punches. Second round, he knocked him out. So you can't go by his inactivity in the first round. That is a Trinidad trait. He just seems to get the range. He's fast. He's accurate. He is a pinpoint puncher, and he is smart. Devilishly smart in the ring. So focused and smooth. But he is a slow starter, but he's starting to pick it up. He got hit with a pretty decent right hand, uh, tail end of a Zulu right hand, not real clean, but clean enough to get Trinidad's attention. It wasn't clean, but it was hard, and it was whistling right through there. Zulu has an awkward style, a strange style, as the bell sounds very hard to hear. You can see he's a little herky-jerky, yeah. a little tight and jumpy, which indicates very tense. As long as he's that way, take him now before he gets a little confident and gets into the fight. Round two, and this is the round that Trinidad has gone down four times in his career. For Zulu, he needs to close the gap. Trinidad has a little reach, a little bit of height, but he has beautiful punches from long range. Devastating right hands and hooks. Zulu needs to get inside that compromise and maybe work Trinidad's body a little bit and take a shot at him early because he always starts so slow. He's got a fast right hand at Zulu. It didn't land very well, but it did land a little bit. It was fast and it's hard. Trinidad's favorite combination is a, a double left hook, a, a hook to the body, followed by a hook to the head. And he throws it well. He dips in nice, turns his body, bends his legs, and he digs up underneath and comes up top. He's very effective. He may be a slow starter, but he's a great finisher. He's a fast finisher. Well, it's a Julio Cesar Chavez special. Chavez perfected that, and that's what this guy did. But Trinidad does not have a great chin. Well, to me, a guy has a great chin when he goes down and gets up and fights like hell and wins the fight. As far as chin's concerned. That's a great resilience, I think. Yeah. You know, the chin may be suspect but, in some areas. Excuse me, Bobby, but a, a pretty left hook there that landed by Zulu. But he's winging. He's very wide. He's, he's a little more arm punching than he should be, but he's punching. He's reaching too much. He, he reaches out like that. The uppercut's going to nail it. He may, if he was scared of the first round, he's not of the second, Zulu. I think he's doing very well from sure. He doesn't seem to be overwhelmed by the moment here in front of the backyard of Trinidad. Trinidad working a nice double jab in the right hand. He's starting to find the range and looking to measure Zulu now. Good defense here by Zulu, able to avoid those left hands. Uh, Zulu nice can't win the fight from out there, Steve. That's not going to be his hey, fight. Hey, wait, wait. Well, look, look at the pretty motion. Look at the pretty motion of uh, Trinidad. He jabs, he moves a little bit. He jabs, he moves a little bit over. He jabs, he moves. He doesn't stay there. He goes a little bit over. He goes a little bit over. He goes a little bit over. And getting that right hand in range. And when he's in range, that's going to drop with devastating effect. Zulu, a, a kid who started out inauspiciously, four and two out of the blocks as a fighter. He's now 17, two and one with only seven knockouts. And he finds himself here in a title shot against one of the top all-around fighters in the uh, world. This straight left hand there by Zulu that, that sent the, the head of Trinidad back. I'll tell you what, right now Trinidad seems to be showing a little more respect than even I thought he would show early on. Worrying about Zulu's punches quite a bit. Zulu throwing more of them. And Zulu's trying to end it with one punch. That could be a mistake because Trinidad knows how to counter beautifully. The bell. Zulu couldn't hear it. It's obviously one of them is Spanish. Hector Perez in the corner there. He doesn't speak English. Neither does Trinidad. Round three. A 
Let's see if he continues Zulu to throw that right. That did land. It's nice to see a fighter look so slick and pretty as Trinidad does when he fights. He's uh, very, very organized. It's very pretty to watch. He's made 11 successful defenses of the oh, straight right hand. Beautiful there, right hand by Trinidad. There's what we're talking about. Trinidad takes his time, finds the distance, finds the range, and when he starts connecting with frequency with that stuff, it's good night, lights out. That, that's that's the purpose of jabbing and moving around. The, the right hand comes in. Now left hooks followed by rights by Trinidad, and the crowd goes wild. Big round for Trinidad. Another left hook by Felix. Pushing Zulu back. See, Trinidad, when he gets his range, he finds his timing and range. He puts them together. He's very accurate, and he's very, a very good puncher. He's crisp. He's sharp. He's quick. He'll counter. Hard to keep him off. As soon as he knows he can hurt Zulu, he'll put him away. But the game Zulu hangs tough. Yeah, jab movement. Jab movement. Then the right hand. Man, that's hard to beat. Trinidad is so economical with his punches. He doesn't waste punches. He doesn't throw too many feel-out punches, range finders. He finds his range when he's ready, and then he lets him go and he makes him count. And as impressive as he is offensively, he's so elusive defensively. He blocked that left hook by Zulu. Zulu comes in wide again, telegraphs. Zulu, the number two contender, the mandatory challenger for this title. A lot of blood coming out of the mouth of Zulu. Zulu's bleeding all over his trunks, coming out of his mouth quite a bit now. Well, he's taking a beating here in this third round and showing the effects from the mouth. And there you see Trinidad do his traditional, makes a one, two, three up top, step down and hook to the body. Beautiful. We approach the final 10 seconds of round three, a big one for the champion. Landing repeatedly on the head of Zulu. He did a great job in that round. And we begin round four. Trinidad off a terrific third round. Studies his opponent's previous fights, memorizing their habits and patterns. And then when he fights them, it's as if he has boxed them before. He's a very ring-savvy guy. He's got good fights ahead of him. If they get through the politics and make them, boy, we should see some beautiful fights in the next three or four years. He obsesses for Oscar De La Hoya, the WBC waterway champion. You never know when that can be made, but when there's that much money involved, it can be made. Right now, they are just both posturing. Well, you have two different networks that have cash cows. Nobody wants to sacrifice the possibility uh, of a superstar they coming down one King, notch. They should go to King Solomon's book. They each have one fight. One network has one, the other guy has a rematch. And then flip goals. Let's get back to this one. Double left hooks by Trinidad. That land. That had to hurt. Trinidad has what we call a very educated left hand. To throw double left hook, body and head. Reverse it, head and body. Keep the double up top or double down below. Mix in jabs and uppercuts. Very, very educated left hand. And there it was again. The left hook right off the top of the head of Zulu. A wild swing and a miss by Zulu and a countering left by Trinidad. Zulu comes back with a straight right, but it doesn't bother the champion. The crowd erupts as Trinidad comes forward. You have a left to the body, Steve. Zulu is in trouble. Zulu lost his balance, but staggered from those punches. Good body shot mixed in there, hurt Zulu, and Trinidad oh, no, knew it, no, no, no. but he couldn't close in for the kill. But that was the first one of the ones we spoke of. Left hook to the side, left hook up above. And there it is again, and that one kills him. Riveting shots to the ribs by Trinidad. A that's minute a to go in the fourth. That's a paralyzing blow to the side. Left uppercuts to the body by Trinidad. He's showing his entire repertoire now. 
He's throwing that left hook to the body beautifully. He's working off the right hand up top. There's a left hook. That one stunned him, and down goes Zulu. Flat on his back. That's it. Forget That's about it. it. Forget about it. He ain't getting up. That's the end of that. That boy can punch, Steve. <laughs> this place is going crazy. The fans are going berserk. They're showering everybody here at ringside with water and beer and soda. Solid punch. The big concern is for Zulu. Still down. Zulu's talking. Fireworks, something just went off. I don't know what that was. Let's hope nobody gets hurt. I hope that isn't the ring collapsing. My a lot goodness. Of I'll tell you what, I couldn't the tell what it was. Look, part of the very ring might have right now, Bobby. Very flimsy, the ring. I think a piece of the board collapsed underneath the ring. I could feel it shaking, vibrations. Unless somebody put a fireworks under the, under the ring. Right here in front of us, it, it, it looks very, very yeah. clumsy. Yeah. If you look, it's, yeah, it's uh, indentation. Is there an indentation there? It's to the right side of the ring. You can see that Budweiser sign, and it's a little above that. Yeah, it's all it's all just caving in over on that side. Well, all of them should watch out because if all that weight gets back on there, they're gonna go right through that. And uh, somebody, got, oh look out! The ring, the ring is, is caving in. The ring is collapsing on the left side. And the everybody should get the left out. side, and the tables have gone down with it, Steve. Oh my goodness! Every as a big hole right in the middle of the ring. Everybody should get out. Jimmy, a gaping hole. Get out. Zulu's up. 